A mangrove swamp is a place of contradictions. A meeting point for polar opposites. Wet and dry land, salt water and fresh. Life here is pushed and pulled to the rhythm of the tides. Nothing remains the same. Change is the only constant. It takes very specialized plants and animals to survive this bombardment of extremes. I have an additional challenge to add to this melting pot because the swamp that I'm visiting today is right in the heart of one of our major cities, Durban. I'm a city girl at heart. So this adventure suits me perfectly. I can disappear into nature for the day, but still catch up on social media before bed. Beechwood Mangrove Nature Reserve is just a short lift out of the city, so it's quick and easy to visit and care for. The reserve boasts an entourage of dedicated volunteers who work with the full-time staff to educate the public clear pollution and upgrade infrastructure. Every time I came to a nature reserve, I'd see, um, in, in, in fact, if you, if you look around here, I would just see rubble, mm. see rubbish, packets, mm. bottles, and I thought there must be some way I can come and help just to clean up. I don't want to get paid for it. All I want to do is just to walk in here and be able to say, wow, this place looks so beautiful, and look at it. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning. We saw the and their passion is infectious, and I start to feel the swamp work its magic on me. The mangrove trees are the real superstars here. Their ability to thrive under such volatile conditions, that's what makes it possible for the rest of the ecosystem to follow suit. The mangrove swamps are very much affected by the tides because every time the tide comes in, the trees are flooded with very, very uh, salty water. That salty water has to be dealt with in some sort of a way. The other extreme they have to deal with is at low tide when all that water gets drained out and you end up with an extremely dry environment. So the trees at the same time in one day has to have to deal with being totally flooded and basically almost drowned to being absolutely dry and having all the moisture sucked out of the ground by the, by the salt content. The salt content we oxygen in Sabatini, Nan and Galentel, and the Zitinga oxygen, no Sawati Ogas, and no Tomuniga cool goes in Guazu Pilagas. So the queuing and the Lenjanins, which is the Guazu Pila, a Gulasimus engine. What Kalanje in Pandas are corners, the Sugi Leg Gunal is a Sasses no mile. It's a Ningi Zinga Pat as a Mamen groves in Pand, Zinga Pes with Labat, and in Nentelis Menga corner, and she go back Uta Galala, Lumans and Galentel. That's why Different species of mangrove trees have got different ways of coping with the high salt content in the area. But the coping method that I like the most is that of the black mangrove. Because as the salt levels build up inside the tree, it sends the excess to one leaf in a tree bunch. That leaf turns yellow and then it falls off. So in essence, it is sacrificing one leaf for the health of the rest. Isn't that ingenious? Now when I look into the forest, all I can see are those salty yellow rejects. But filtering water only solves one of the basic requirements for life. 
trees also need oxygen to survive, and swamp mud is almost completely devoid of oxygen. Soil here, rich in organic material, is laden with hydrogen sulfide, the fumes that smell of rotten egg, not the ideal composition for growth. But as Zoe had told me, mangrove trees find a resourceful way around this challenge. I'm finding these spikes that are coming out of the ground particularly intriguing. You'd think they're little baby seedlings, wouldn't you? Well, actually they're not. They are aerial roots, and they belong to this tree over here, the white mangrove, which uses these roots to draw oxygen from the air. As with all ecosystems, once plants find their footing and establish themselves, it's easy for animals to follow suit. These climbing whelks feed on algae that accumulates on roots and stems. The mangrove trees also provide an evacuation route in case of severe flooding, because the whelks just climb up and away from the high tide. This swamp is also home to a fish that prefers to be out of the water. Mudskippers don't breathe air, but they can survive for a long time on land. They do this by carrying water with them in a large pouch in their mouths. They swirl this water over their gills to extract oxygen and then return to the water to replenish it. This frees them to hunt for midges and michis on the mud and hunt for partners. Males take courtship very seriously and aggressively flash their vivid dorsal fins to warn off any would-be challenges. So Keith, do the mudskippers ever come all the way up here? No, they don't come up as high as this. They stick close to the water because they have to return to the water to replace the water that they're carrying in their gills. They do come up where there is a stream like this. There, there yeah. is one over there. Yeah. There's a little patch of water that's coming from the creek up into the dry mud. And that is the only type of place where they come further away from the main stream. A little deeper into the forest, just beyond the mud flats, it's a neighbor's turn to pick up tasty tidbits off the mud. Now, I've been waiting to play with these all day. Apparently, the red mangrove crabs go crazy over them. And when I say go crazy, I mean all they need is to hear a leaf drop and they rush to it like mad. I'm going to put it to the test. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Special hairs on their keeler, or claws, detect the vibrations of a leaf landing. Red mangrove crabs are so keen on the savory snack, individuals wait at their tunnel entrances in anticipation. There's never time for leaf litter to collect here. The forest floor is kept pristine. Norman tempts me away from the hungry crabs with another surprise, a tranquil boat trip through the heart of the forest swamp. Although, I don't know if I'd use the word tranquil. Okay, there's a big branch coming up now, so it's just back there. Here we go. We're almost in the open channel. Right. Okay, now we've got a clear channel again. Now we can just have one. I know! The branches! <laughs> oh look, here, here are the pencil roots. And these ones that have got like leaves, they can't be the pencil roots, they've no, got to be... Those are the, the seeds. When they land in the, in the mud, they, they plant themselves and they slowly start growing. And then eventually... And they grow into mangrove trees? They grow, grow into these mangrove trees here, the black mangroves. But then, they can't grow so close together. Well, look how big they are. They grow close together because it drops so many seeds. And then once the clearing opens, then the tree starts to expand. And then it really, really goes for it. 
um, the older trees will then eventually die down and fall down and the new growth will, the new forest will be there. So it's constantly replenishing. I finally relax in the peaceful forest, but these guys just yeah, can't cool. leave me alone. <laughs> oh my goodness, wait, did you see? Look, I'm not crazy. Look. That's a marsh crab. Where is it? It's a marsh crab. You I know promise you. To, look. As the tide comes up, they start oh. climbing up the branches. Uh, I can't even paddle. And they'll slowly come up, and eventually the, the, all the branches will just be covered with crabs. And if you startle them, this is something that I don't want you to panic about too much. It can start raining crabs. Because they'll just jump in panic. Maybe I should paddle. Just but... <laughs> I'm just joking, they don't really, they don't really jump. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not really scared of crab. <clears throat> like you were saying? They're very mm. fluffy, cuddly creatures, aren't they? Mm, <laughs> lovely. <Ooh. laughs> the mangrove swamp is a crab haven. It makes sense. Just like the mudskippers, crabs breathe with gills but can live on land too by keeping their gills wet, which means remaining close to water. Now these little guys are more my size. Fiddler crabs feed on the exposed mud when the tide retreats, though I don't see much eating going on. The male crabs, easy to spot with their one oversized pincer, are far too busy impressing the females. Right-handed or left-handed, all this frantic waving is to secure a mate. The massive claw is totally useless for foraging, so the males have to work twice as hard as the females to get food. Nature never ceases to amaze me. Despite the hardships of the salty water, the battering of the waves, needing to be wet for half a day, then dry for half a day, life always rises to the challenge. Beechwood Mangrove Reserve is a gift of small things. It's easy to pass on by and see nothing. But if you take the time to be still and wait, you are rewarded with a myriad of wonders. Even in our busiest cities, there are places where wildlife thrives, if we know where to look. Yeah.